Goenus is inside. His attitude has become quite a bit more cooperative overnight. He will talk if he survives, meaning if we can restrain Bestia. I understand. That will not be a problem. I sent him away. He's probably drowning his sorrows in wine now. The Consul has announced that he wants to question this criminal himself, so I expect him to send some of his lictors our way. We are prepared for them. Always. She was supposed to be here. I don't know what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. Everything is silent. He whimpers like a wounded dog. But silence is in the air. He tried to lick me. There are much better reasons to kill him. We did not kill him for those. So why for a small thing like this? <laughs> he is not worth saving. For now... He is evil. Does not matter if he dies. He deserves eternal torment. Fine. Well, here we go again. You want to try your hand at torturing me as well? And if I don't want to answer? Then why am I alive? <sighs> Ask then. Let's get this over with. For too long, he hired me back when he assumed control of Weeksy. Of course not. Weeksy existed in one form or another for hundreds of years. Felix is only the latest of its commanders. I'm no fanatic, though. He merely hired me as a contingency. I am loyal to my contract. Besides, all of his loyal guards are dead, thanks to you. If I have to choose between loyalty and death, I don't have to ponder my options for long. It's not just money. 
Lurko is a very intelligent man, and I respect that. He plans ahead, and he rarely leaves things to chance. It is the first serious misstep I have ever seen him make. You have got him powerfully rattled. That's why he will never face you in the Senate. That's why he sent me to assassinate you at last. Not out of any personal animosity. With Marcellus and his useless brutes gone, it was up to me to finish the job. You asked the right question. He still has many allies in high places. Why would he risk it indeed? My job was simply to get rid of you. The Consul obviously hoped you'd get yourself killed in Gallia. I guess this was his contingency plan. You of all people should know that warfare is about positioning. Once you can cover any possible move your foe might make, victory is a natural outcome. Merely by trying to win from such a position, your enemy defeats himself. I would not bet on that. Look, I'm getting bored of this. We both know you're not going to kill me, and I've told you all I know. Frankly, none of this is any use to you. For all I know, me getting caught is part of Lurko's plan. So, hand me over to the authorities and let me face charges. It will never come to that. He will not be going anywhere. I will make sure of it. Keep your wits about you out there, my friend.
Did he talk? That is comforting. I'm glad we have him. What do we do now? This is so unlike him. Usually he has a plan. I wonder if the whole Corwinus business was a distraction. Distraction from what? That could be a benefit of all this, but if you couldn't make him talk... Not a bad idea at all. The pressure on Lurko is mounting. Every man has a breaking point. I took precautions. The Consul of Rome cannot leave the city unnoticed. I thought they'd be with you. I haven't seen any of your companions since yesterday. Come to think of it, Carto wanted to meet us here too. But he's late. He should be here any moment now. Don't worry. Carto is a smart man who knows how to handle a Gladius. There he is. Your Praetorian Guard is captured in front of the Senate. We must hurry! It seems he has them arrested for a number of crimes. He is still dictator. He can do whatever he wants. I fear there is nothing we can do to stop him within the bounds of the law. Political theater. He has gathered a crowd and he's calling you out. You must be very careful. The lives of your friends are at stake. I'll try to gather some Praetores. This is blatantly illegal, but I guess he's finally given up all pretense. He is desperate. Be very careful. Desperate men do stupid things. I'll come with you to witness the situation. Keep him occupied until I can bring help. Don't antagonize him. I will come with you as well. The Vestal Virgins will look after your mother.
traitor to the Republic, murderer of Romans, enemy of the people. I have had your co-conspirators arrested, and they are patiently waiting for their moment of execution. But my own patience is wearing thin. I know villains like you do not have a sense of honor or virtue. Nevertheless, I know you were at least born Roman. If you have a speck of honor left, confess and surrender. Consul, what are you doing? You can't publicly execute people without trial. Our laws forbid such despotism. As dictator, prescription is well within my rights. The people of Rome saw fit to grant me that power. Who are you to question the wisdom of the people? As long as Rome remains in crisis, I shall remain dictator. Your traitor friends are rightfully apprehended. If you want them, you'll have to go through me. Clearly isn't. You are still alive, aren't you? You always worked against me, when the only thing I wanted was to build a strong room, just like your father. You are envious of what I will achieve. Works are built on bloodshed. Sacrifices must be made. Then make your sacrifice yourself, coward. Unless your intention is to bore me to death, I would like to start executing these criminals. This is all shit. Those people are heroes. Nothing wrong! Let them go! You have lost your control, Lurko. Look at the faces of these people, your fellow citizens. They're afraid. Only criminals and traitors should be afraid of me. They're afraid of what you have turned the Republic into. That fear will turn into anger the moment anyone decides to stand up and protect the Republic. You're a good tactician. Consider your position now. Your prisoners are the only advantage you possess. But they're only valuable while they're still alive. The Legatus can wait until you turn yourself into a murderer. Or we can simply kill you and save them all. Then you will have achieved nothing here. You wouldn't do that. You're men of law and order.
your loyalty is admirable. Believe me, I don't want to die. But I also don't want to see you dead. Don't let him kill us like this. Whatever comes next, we will stand by your side. We will weather the storm as one. Don't do it, my friend! If you strike him down now, you'll give him legitimate cause to kill you! We are not worth that sacrifice! They say you're not a true hero until you die. Enough! Make your decision! As you wish. Who shall we take first? Get it over with. Take me first. Then at least I won't have to listen to your drivel any longer. Don't do this! You love him, and he loves you. He should not lose you. Take me instead. My time was always borrowed. I will see my sister again in the House of Song. Is it justice? I decide what is just! Execute her! find you in the afterlife, and we will hunt together again. A traitor to the Republic has been brought to justice. I truly wonder what you will do now. I'm a man of my word. Witnesses! Who's going to hold me responsible? I am dictator in perpetuo! Pompeius executed too! Calm yourselves! People
people of Rome, I am you. Don't you understand? A firm hand is what the Republic needs! What? Tyrant! Down with him! Get him! Pull him down from there! Get me out of here! Just get me out! You're in your own console! Yes, Vitellius Lurko, you're not going anywhere. Throw yourself at the mercy of the Senate. You can't do this. You don't have the authority. Get your hands off me. I am your consul. For long, we'll see to that. You won. My friend, you did it. I'm sure you have a lot to talk about. It is good to see you up and about, though. You look better. Such things are natural. You've been tested physically and mentally. Furthermore, you've triumphed over your opponent. That much is certain. Your friends did not give their lives in vain. It should have been someone else. Deianera had no reason to give her life for Rome. She didn't. She gave her life for us. Lurko will certainly be exiled, or even executed. The Senate doesn't have a high opinion of traitors. Obviously, you will have to testify. There were accusations on both sides. The Senate must hear your side of the story. If you will forgive me for bringing this up, I believe this will be good for your political career. You should measure yourself against the best of consuls, not the worst. As far as the Senate is concerned, you are a tragic hero who brought a corrupt consul to justice. Regardless of what happens to Lyoko, Rome will need a new consul, and I can't think of a better candidate. Cato is right. Both the Optimates and the Populares already support you. If you run for Senate, the election will result in a landslide win. I have no doubts. You did save them. Those who remain alive have you to thank for it. This chapter ends and another chapter begins.
Fortuna alone knows what the future holds. So ends the abridged history of one of the most beloved consuls of the Republic of Rome. It is thanks to him and his efforts to thwart the corruption and ambition of Vitellius Lurco that Rome remains a proud republic to this day. With his allies in the Senate, he worked tirelessly to address the problems that had plagued the Republic since its birth. Though many among the people of Rome lamented what they saw as a lost opportunity to challenge the status quo, the strengthening of democracy greatly improved life throughout the provinces of Rome. In time, the savior of the Republic took his well-deserved place in history among such heroes as Cincinnatus or Scipio Africanus. Cineros. Once he had been an athlete, a wrestler, and a troublemaker. But in our story, he was a service, a protector, and a mentor. He had died diligently performing the task to which he had devoted himself, protecting his ward. Cineros was given a tomb in Rome's finest cemetery, next to his old Dominus, whose death had incited this story. His cowardly murder had robbed him of any opportunity to see his homeland again. Though he met his end with dignity, he was forever denied the forgiveness and the vindication that he had sought for the mistakes of his youth. Caeso finally seemed to have had his fill of military campaigns. Together with Lucia and their daughter, he settled down in Rome. Though their relationship was distant at first, the shared love they felt for their daughter soon brought them close, and eventually they had many more children together. To his surprise, Caeso took well to the quiet life and to fatherhood. He remained very close with his old friends, with whom he often met to drink and eat and share stories of their old lives as the heroes of the Republic. Calida's second marriage turned out considerably better than her first. With her beloved husband committed to letting her live her best life, she was happy to settle down by his side, supporting him in his endeavors as he supported her. Calida was happy to find that it was possible to be a wife and a mother without giving up the things she loved. She taught their children archery and horseback riding, and nobody ever again looked down on her for her unwomanly pursuits. Bestia stayed in Rome and remained close friends with his old companions going out of his way to stay in touch with them all, no matter the distance that separated them. He returned to the arena, but no longer as a gladiator. His new vocation was to teach Pancratian, inspired by the story of his old Magister Cineros. Though it brought him little wealth, there is no doubt it made him happy. As soon as things had quieted down, Bestia traveled to Africa once more to look for his sister. He did find her and bring her home, and she lived happily there for the rest of her life. Deanira had given her life for her friends with no hesitation and no fear in her eyes. The Amazon warrior knew that she had avenged her sister and forgiven herself for her misdeeds. She went to the Chinvat Bridge with her head held high, ready to be judged. Claudiana lived for many more years, she had many friends in Rome, and her life was peaceful and comfortable until her final days. On her deathbed, she revealed that she had once been very close indeed with Lucullus, and that indeed the true family name of her children was Licinia. Cato remained an important figure in Roman politics, grudgingly respected even by those among the population who desired change, he remained a defender of the patrician class, a shield against the pandering and opportunism of more populist voices. He himself was elected consul twice throughout his life, and his years in the position were generally favorably regarded. Cicero served one more year as consul before his retirement. In his old days, he lived a quiet life on a farm in Sicily, where he was greatly beloved by the people for his time as quaestor. He continued to write many books on politics and law. Defeated once more by Rome, Mithridates escaped to the lands north of the Black Sea in the hope that he could raise a new army. 
but the locals soon rebelled against his rule. Incapable of taking his own life by poison, in the end, Mithridates died by the sword of his bodyguard. With Zenobia in charge of Musia, it became once more a peaceful part of the Roman province of Asia Minor. With her focus on trade and strong ties to the neighboring regions, her people enjoyed a period of great prosperity. Grateful for the mercy he had been shown, and no longer with Mithridates to tempt his greed, Damianos quickly resumed political leadership of Thracia. Here, the gladiator rebellion that had started in his school was threatening to spiral out of control. Thanks to Damianos, the gladiators were pacified quickly and without inordinate bloodshed. With the death of the Pharaoh Ptolemy and Queen Cleopatra, the Ptolemaic dynasty had fallen. With Rome finally at peace and under strong leadership, Egypt simply became another province ruled by a succession of proconsuls who cared more about lining their own pockets than improving the lives of Egyptians. Over the years, several attempts were made to claw back self-governance for Egypt, but time and again, Rome struck down all dissent. With the death of Cleopatra and under the steady guidance of Lunya, Nazarmanes once more became a peaceful and prosperous part of Africa Proconsularis, firmly aligned with Rome. As the eldest and most respected elder of the Berber tribes, Lunya became a singular figure of leadership and respect in the region. She was said to be more than a hundred years old when she died. After traveling all across Africa for many years, going wherever her instincts took her, Raya eventually returned to Memphis and to the service of Tenere at the Temple of Ubasti. When her mentor passed away, Raya naturally assumed the mantle as High Priestess of the Cat Goddess. Though the old faith was dwindling, she was greatly beloved by many, and her temple prospered, always home to many, many, many cats. With Diwitiakus once more assuming rulership of the Idwe, the tribe maintained a strong alliance with Rome, and through it, they greatly prospered. With the aid of the Aedui, Gallia slowly unified under Roman rule, and civilization soon began to creep into those lands in the form of paved roads, aqueducts, and fortified Roman towns. In his old age, did the Druid ever regret hastening the absorption and suppression of his own faith and culture? We will never know. The defeat and death of Workingatorix had reduced the once mighty Awerni tribe to a myriad bickering chieftains. Without his vision, his charisma, and his resolve, there was no unifying figure to rally around, and no way for Gallia to resist their slow but inevitable assimilation into Rome. Perhaps if Workingatorix had lived, some of their culture or religion might have survived in some form. But surely they must be grateful that civilization at last was brought to their lands. In this work, I have done my best to recount the history of this fascinating period, truthfully and accurately. As I have scoured the sources and spoken to many who claimed to have heard the story from someone who was there at the time, one thing that has stood out to me is the pivotal moments along the way where our story could have turned out very differently. In his darkest moods, the savior of Rome must have wondered if there was anything he could have done differently to save his friends. Perhaps if he had struck down Watelius Lurko on that stage, or if he had gone so far as to bring his legion across the Rubicon, none of his companions would have had to die. But for those of us left to live in a peaceful and strong republic, what transpired seems like the best possible outcome. Our republic was saved and the villain, Vitellius Lurko, was brought to justice. One should always take care when second-guessing historical figures with the benefit of hindsight. Here in the present, there will never truly be a way for you to know how you might have acted if you had lived in the past. Nor can you ever be certain how history will remember you.